So for the uh, agenda today, uh, we'll just do a little bit of a background on kind of what, what it means to provision phones, uh, talk about some of the traditional challenges that you might have run into in provisioning phones, either with operator or with other PBXs. And then we'll talk about provisioning specifically with Cario Operator, um, all of the different types of devices that you can provision, and, and specifically how Operator uh, addresses a lot of those kind of common or traditional challenges with phone provisioning. Um, and then we'll talk about the different types of devices that you can provision with Operator uh, in terms of achieving special types of solutions and all the different features that you can get. Uh, and then we've reserved a few slides at the end just in case you uh, had some questions. You know, this, these tend to be somewhat technical uh, uh, presentations. So, you know, we do like to, to provide some tips and tricks uh, as far as, you know, how to resolve certain uh, issues you might have run into. And, and phone provisioning, it, it is entirely possible, especially if you're manually provisioning something, uh, to have encountered any kinds of challenges. So that's one of the uh, objectives here for the, the webinar today is to kind of help you out and steer you in the right direction if, uh, if you have done provisioning and maybe had some, some challenges uh, in, in doing so. And then, of course, uh, Karsten will uh, uh, go through a presentation or, sorry, a demonstration here at the end of the presentation. And uh, we'll open it up in the end for a question and answer. And again, you've got the pod there on the right, so if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask them throughout the, uh, the presentation. So just a a uh, brief uh, ref refresher of operator um, for those that might be new, kind of a standard uh, uh, template here for the presentations. Um, so uh, voice uh, and video, um, that's something, of course, we've added recently in the 2.4 release, the ability to have video calling, and that's a, certainly a, a nice benefit of the product. Um, security is a, a big focal point of Cario Operator and, of course, of Cario Technologies. We also um, provide a uh, security product in Cario Control. So uh, that's uh, certainly something that we emphasize. And if you have a uh, PBX uh, hosted on the internet, definitely you want to make sure that uh, it has strong passwords and all kinds of other security controls built in. And Cario Operator has very good defaults uh, to ensure those things. So definitely an uh, important uh, aspect of, of any PBX and uh, certainly of Cario Operator. Uh, flexible deployment, another very important attribute of, of Cario op Operator, the fact that you can deploy it as a hardware device as a virtual appliance, uh, as a software appliance, and recently uh, you can deploy it through Cario Cloud. And one of the uh, main value propositions, I think, of an IP-based PBX is the cost savings. So the fact that it's uh, you're not necessarily tied to the traditional uh, telcos, uh, telephone service providers, that you can use cloud-based uh, hosted SIP services, which generally offer you very uh, sort of easy monthly digestible uh, billing plans that um, uh, oftentimes give you unlimited uh, calling and uh, very, very uh, just simple and shared shared lines uh, as well. So um, cost savings is a, is a big uh, selling point for uh, any IP PBX and certainly a carry operator as well. So just a brief uh, uh, kind of overview of what it really means to provision uh, a phone or a, or a device with a PBX. Um, it really boils down to just a few simple settings. It's basically defining, just like you know, with, with a email client application, for example, there's really just a few basic parameters. Um, although sometimes uh, they may be sort of hidden in a, in a, in a larger menu of options. Um, but generally it boils down to just a, a server address or a gateway, a username, a password, and a display name for caller ID. So those are really the basics that you need in order to uh, configure a phone with a PBX such as Cario Operator. So some of the, uh, the challenges perhaps that you might have run into uh, when provisioning phones with any PBX, um, sometimes you may need to have a very specific or controlled networking environment. Um, you might have to have a specific DHCP on the network or they might have to be all in the same subnet or VLAN or in some very controlled uh, environment uh, which uh, is yeah oftentimes uh, the case. Um, maybe you can't uh, provision phones from outside the network, so it might just be a, a set restriction that you, all of the phones that you're um, provisioning or configuring have to be on the same subnet, the same local physical network as the PBX. Um, you know, as well, you may not have been able to configure um, 
a software application or a mobile application. Uh, might be limited on the types of phones that you can use. Some PBX solutions uh, require a specific uh, phone that, that, that uh, comes with the PBX, so you really don't have the freedom to choose what type of uh, phones you want to use. Um, uh, you might also have limited options for other components, so if you have certain requirements for faxing or public address systems, if you want to have cordless phones, usually in those scenarios where you're uh, stuck with a specific type of phone, you, you really don't have those other options. Um, and configuration can always be a challenge uh, depending on the solution you use. Obviously, with Carrier Operator, we try to really simplify the whole process with the automatic provisioning, but uh, you may have found in, in other cases, uh, other PBXs, the, uh, the process for configuring the phones was not automatic or even required special TFTP or firmware updates. Um, so now just to briefly kind of uh, counteract some of those points with how Carrier Operator addresses them. Um, so if, if you do have, uh, um, or if you, if you don't have uh, a, a firewall or rather a DHCP server, um, on your network, uh, Carrier Operator does have its own built-in, um, so that sort of takes or eliminates one other dependency to really simplify the process of automatic provisioning, which generally is, uh, you know, it is a requirement for phones that they need to have some type of uh, DHCP server to get their IP information as well as the TFTP server to uh, contact. So that's uh, an option within Carrier Operator is to use the built-in DHCP. Um, you can also remotely provision phones. Uh, it's very common that you have remote employees that, that uh, work in other locations. So you can either connect through, uh, configure the phones through VPN. Most phones support um, L2TP over IPsec. Um, and depending on the phone, that might be fairly, fairly intuitive or sometimes a little bit more challenging. But the other approach is just to uh, simply configure, you know, make sure that your SIP ports are open on the firewall um, and then configure manually uh, the either the soft phone or the actual phone. And that's something that we'll show you a bit uh, in, the, in the demonstration as well, just to show you how, what you need to configure to make that happen. Um, and you, as well, uh, just as I was saying with the demonstration, we'll be configuring a SIP-based application. So you can use your, your desktop computer, laptop, or um, your smartphone uh, to register uh, and, and to use uh, or to initiate calls from those devices as well. So you're not just limited to the phone on your desk. You can use software applications or you can use your smartphone device. Um, and you do have a, a wide range of phones that, uh, that that you can choose from. So with Operator, you know, we support, and that's obviously part of the presentation here is to point out a lot of those different types of phones that, uh, that we do support. So you're not just limited to a single model of phone. You can uh, choose from uh, a, a wide range from Brandstream, Cisco to Yealink, um, and SNOM, and so forth. Um, and then for those special types of uh, solutions for public address or for cordless, um, you know, those are options, and of course, for faxing as well. So uh, you can uh, accomplish those types of solutions uh, with various devices that provision with Carrier Operator. Um, and then with automatic provision, uh, provisioning, it just simplifies the whole process, the plug and play. Um, uh, the carrier operator pushes out firmware updates, so it's a, a very automatic and simple process. And so to show you kind of how that, that provisioning process works, you see here we've got an example of a phone. Uh, we've got uh, a, a DHCP server with an example of carrier control, and then the, uh, the PBX in carrier operator. So first, uh, first phase, the uh, phone sends out the DHCP request when it plugs onto the network, uh, the firewall, uh, then replies, picks up that request, replies, says, okay, here's your IP address, your TCP IP parameters, and also here is your TFTP server address, which is the server that the phone needs to talk to to obtain its configuration data. So then uh, the phone locates the PBX, sends the provisioning request, and then carry operator or the PBX replies with, the gateway, the credentials, and the display name. So the caller ID, the, the basics that are needed for the provisioning. There's a few additional parameters as well, um, but those are the basics, the main uh, main items that get pushed down to the phone. So you're not uh, limited to automatic provisioning, although it, it does, of course, uh, simplify things, but you can also manually provision phones. So in the scenario that the phone is remote, or if you want to have some more 
advanced type of configuration, you might choose to manually provision the phone. So that process, uh, the administrator first goes into operator, uh, prepares an extension, assigns a user, um, and then maps the uh, uh, DID. So, if, and that's an optional step. So, if you uh, if you do want to dedicate or allocate a specific uh, phone number to a specific extension, you can certainly do that, and that's the direct inward dial or, or DID. Um, so, once the administrator is sort of allocated uh, uh, that information, it then the the admin then logs in via a web browser to the phone by its IP address. Um, and then assigns those parameters within the configuration of the phone. Um, and that, uh, as we indicated earlier, includes the gateway or the IP address or host name of carrier operator, uh, the username and password of the extension, and then the caller ID or the display name. Uh, and then once you've configured those parameters on the phone, it's then able to register and start uh, sending and receiving calls through the PBX. Uh, so if you are going to manually provision a phone, we put together a little table here just because the naming scheme um, is not always uh, consistent across devices. So whereas with Cario Operator, the, uh, we call them the SIP username and SIP password. So you see in this example, it's 20P1 is the username, and then the password, actually if you click on the key, as Karsten will show in the demonstration, it'll pull up what the, uh, the password is. Usually uh, the Carrier operator will assign a strong password. Um, so you'll see here in the uh, the table uh, for SNOM phones, uh, the uh, it's called the account or the password. Uh, the registrar would be the uh, the SIP gateway address. Um, display name would be the caller ID. Um, so and then the grand stream and the Cisco phones have their own labels for uh, those same types of parameters. So they're, they're usually somewhat consistent, but as you can see, uh, they're not exactly identical, but usually explanatory enough that you can kind of uh, figure out which is which. Now, of course, I should also uh, point out that we have knowledge base articles that uh, uh, for, for various phones do point, point out uh, um, what those fields, how they map specifically uh, to uh, the terminology that we use within the administration interface of Cario Operator. So to point out just a few cases of you know, autom automatic versus uh, manual provisioning, maybe what the differences are and when you might use one versus the other. So uh, automatic provisioning that uh, is really a simplified plug-and-play kind of a setup, whereas with manual provisioning it does require uh, a, a little bit more uh, time and effort because you're having to manually set up the phone. So that's a case where obviously automatic provisioning um, is the preferred option there for the, just the simplicity's sake. Um, as well, it's a little bit easier to manage because it's all centrally managed. So you want to make some update, you can do that within the administration and then it gets pushed out to the phone. Uh, whereas with manual provisioning, if there is some type of a um, uh, a general rule that you want to change for everyone, you have to log into all of the phones manually. Um, so, for example, uh, if the IP address or host name uh, changes within the PBX, you would have to log in all of the phones separately and configure that. Or if the, the password had changed on one of the extensions, uh, you'd have to log in manually to configure that. So, again, the, the, you know, using automatic provisioning is, is the preferred route. Uh, just for the simplicity and centralized management. Um, although on the other hand, where automatic provisioning, uh, it, it's not going to give you the full configuration, full management over the phone. It's sort of a simplified basic set of configuration parameters. Uh, when you manually provision a phone, you have significantly more um, options and configuration over the phone. So for a more advanced type of uh, configuration, that's where you might favor the manual provisioning. And sort of along that note, uh, the manual provisioning supports unique configuration. So you might have a situation where certain power users, uh, they need to have very special, you know, BLF configuration or, or something that you can't normally control uh, within the automatic provisioning. So that's a case where maybe for certain users, you might want to just manually provision those phones. Uh, with automatic provisioning, because it's so heavily tied to 
DHCP and to TFTP configuration. Uh, that is a situation where you need to have somewhat of a controlled networking environment, um, whereas with manual provisioning, um, and that's why sometimes manually provisioning a phone is preferred if you have remote users, because in that case, uh, you don't have control over their local network. Um, and so that's why if you manually provision the phone, if you pre-configure it, you can sort of send it off. It can be plugged into any uh, remote network that you don't have control over, and it can still connect remotely, um, assuming you have the, the, the right ports open for a SIP, uh, it'll be able to remotely register itself. So that's a case where uh, manual provisioning is, is definitely uh, the preferred option. So now we'll go into some of the, uh, the actual devices that, that you can use to uh, accomplish certain types of uh, solutions with, uh, with Karyl Operator. Uh, so video calling, as I was pointing out, that's something that we just recently added in 2.4 of Karyl Operator, so it's a nice uh, new improvement and, and definitely does uh, really improve the, uh, the, the the level of collaboration and uh, and, and, and does uh, add to the productivity and um, and does kind of reduce the needs in some cases to actually have to go on site or to to travel somewhere. So um, I pointed out just a few of the phones that uh, that do support uh, video calling. It is uh, somewhat uh, somewhat limited. Not all phones support them, and they're usually pretty uh, advanced uh, types of phones, the high end models. Um, now, I do, uh, you know, personally like the uh, the Grandstream model that that one on the left there. That's the one that um, we've been using a fair bit uh, internally, uh, and they are uh, quite cost effective. You can find them; they're well, pretty widely available, and uh, usually somewhere uh, just over two hundred dollars. So for the uh, uh, for getting the call qual or getting the uh, video calling uh, with a nice large touch display like that is uh, so for. for that price range is pretty, uh, pretty nice. So that's kind of my uh, preferred phone for for the moment. So, um, so as well, uh, making calls from anywhere, uh, which is kind of something we've been talking a bit about. But um, using specifically a smartphone device, so we obviously do have the uh, uh, Carrier Operator soft phone app, um, <clears throat> which is available for Android and iOS. Um, and if you, for whatever reason, uh, can't or choose not to use the soft phone app. Uh, because of the fact that Karyo Operator is SIP-based, you can always use other uh, SIP-based um, uh, soft phone apps as well. So another pretty popular one that uh, that we've recommended in the past is the uh, uh, Acrobit's uh, Groundwire. So that's another one you can use for Android uh, as well as uh, iOS. Uh, similar to using smartphones, you can also use your computer. So as we'll show in the demo, uh, you can install a soft phone app and uh, and basically just use your computer for uh, for doing phone calls. So uh, just a couple of the apps that we have tested and, and would recommend, uh, you see from the list there, the Counterpath Bria, uh, Zoiper, uh, Blank Light, and, uh, and Telephone, which is uh, uh, one I, I like. It's a very clean and simple uh, telephone app, although it, it is available only for uh, the Mac operating system. But it's a, a free, simple uh, little app. So, <clears throat> one of the other solutions is uh, cordless calling. So you see a few of the examples there: a Yealink phone and the Stom uh, M325. So the decked uh, cordless uh, mobility type of, of calling. So uh, they they typically have a base station. So that's the device that provisions, and then they have the the decked for uh, doing the uh, the cordless uh, between the base station and the phone itself. So this way you can have certain uh, people that are on the go and kind of moving around uh, within uh, some relative proximity to the base station, but you know, maybe mobile moving around the office, uh, but not necessarily tied specifically to their desk. And similar to the cordless option, you have the uh, the Bluetooth. So uh, if you're again, you know, still needing to have the hands-free experience of uh, um, you know not having to hold the phone up to your ear and, and being able to have both both hands free. Uh, this, is, this is also a nice uh, option. And just to list some of the phones that we support that also support Bluetooth, uh, you see the list there. And that Plantronics M165, uh, that's uh, the one that I happen to have paired with my uh, Grandstream GXV. And it's a pretty inexpensive uh, uh, earpiece. I think it's somewhere around $60. Um, and it uh, works out quite well. So, uh, But you know, that a device similar to that uh, would work with 
or should work with any of the other Bluetooth phones that uh, you see in the list there. And just to point out the cost-effective, uh, there, there are other uh, types of uh, wireless solution for phones, um, but via Bluetooth uh, that provides a very cost-effective means of uh, having a wireless phone set up. You know, we have used different devices in the past that actually have an electronic lever, so it sort of gives you kind of a, a semi way of achieving cordless uh, or wireless calling, but uh, uh, if you go with a phone that does have built-in Bluetooth, then you can take advantage of some of these more cost-effective uh, cordless earpieces. Uh, so for faxing, uh, if, if you do have environments where you still need to send and receive faxes, kind of the uh, using the old uh, uh, old school way, um, certainly that's a possibility, and we have a, a device for doing that. Um, one one option is just to connect the uh, or just basically allocate a POTS line, sort of your traditional uh, telephone circuit, and have that connected directly to the fax machine. The other option is to use one of these uh, ATA devices, an adapter that will uh, convert from the SIP signaling to uh, analog used by the fax machine. So this particular device, this SPA-112, uh, that does auto-provision with operators, so you get sort of that simplified automatic setup of uh, fax devices. And as well, uh, so if you uh, have other analog devices, specifically you know, analog phone, this is probably you wouldn't run into one of these uh, uh, in, in most environments, um, but you may run into analog phones that um, are kind of similar in nature that don't support IP-based uh, SIP directly. Um, so you need to have some type of uh, uh, an ATA to do the conversion from SIP to analog. So just like with the uh, the fax device, uh, that, that the SPA-112, uh, you've got something similar, the SPA-8000, which essentially does the same thing, converting from um, SIP-based uh, IP telephony to uh, analog-based uh, signaling. So if you do have a scenario where you need public addressing, um, you know, like you've got a warehouse or maybe it's a school environment, uh, you can use one of these guys. This is the SNOM PA-1, um, and it does adapt to um, loudspeakers so that you can uh, broadcast to uh, a larger, um, even an auditorium. So, and it does have a built-in speaker, so it's pretty pretty loud for you know smaller environments, but uh, it's, uh, you can certainly have it uh, connect to a louder, more amplified uh, sound setup. So, and the idea there is that basically you make a call to the extension that's registered to the device, it automatically answers and automatically broadcasts that sound. So conferencing, another very standard type of functionality, pretty much any office environment is going to have a, a need for, for uh, conferencing. So you see here the different uh, units that we support and auto provision for that, you've got your choice of the SNOM meeting point, gay link, uh, or the uh, polycom. So any one of these uh, you will auto provision with Karyo operator. So now I'll go ahead and uh, pass it over to Karsten. He'll walk you through uh, uh, the items you see here, just con uh, configuring phones for provisioning, assigning an extension, uh, mapping a number to an extension, uh, adding a registration to an extension, uh, configuring an extension for video calling, uh, configuring or enabling the soft phone app for a uh, carrier operator, configuring uh, the soft phone and uh, calling uh, the PBX to sort of validate and test that you've set those things uh, correctly. So, Karsten? Yeah, thank you, Brian, for the presentation so far. Um, before I start the demonstration, I would just shortly answer uh, loud so everybody can hear it to a question of Tony Dennis. Uh, he was asking, yeah, Link also has a video conferencing uh, phone with their T48G model. Does operator support that? Basically, yes, it should support it. The only challenge you um, will have when you do the video calling is that Normally, and we have not uh, come across any phone which is capable of that, um, that you should, you should stick uh, to the same, same model. So um, it could be, for example, that the Yearlink is only capable of doing um, the video codec, let's say, H263, um, but another phone can do the H264 
4. So the problem is that when those phones are talking to each other and they are not going to negotiate the smallest um, codec both have in common. So they stick with the codec they have implemented in the phone or you have chosen um, in the settings of the phone. So at that point you just should remember um, that if you're going to use or if you would like to implement uh, video calling and video phone calls in your company um, you should uh, take care that basically you're using the same brand uh, model phone model for your employees or that you at least um, agree um, to one a specific video codec all the phones are capable of. So um, now I'm going to switch over. We are not forgetting your questions and answers but I'm just switching now first to the demo and we can continue with the question and answers later on. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to share my screen and now you should see the administration interface of the Cario operator box. So again, this is the dashboard. You see a, a brief overview of some uh, interesting information you have maybe attached here to the dashboard screen. But we are now going to the point of provisioned phones uh, in the left column. And when you now look uh, in the lower right corner, and I will just zoom in a little bit uh, so you can see it maybe better. I made the experience in the webinar this afternoon. You see in the lower right corner you see a button which is named provisioning settings. When you click on that um, a window opens up and if you would like to activate the automatic provision you have to tick the box enable provisioning and you should also tick the box create new extension for new registered phones. What does it mean? It means whenever you have a new hardware phone and you, um, and you plug it into your network outlet um, in, in, the, in the, the jack into the uh, network, then it will automatically receive a new extension from the carrier operator box. So you do not need to take care about assigning a specific extension to that phone and it will automatically provision. Um, what I would like to say additionally at that point is that you can definitely have auto provisioning and manual provisioning side by side. So in case, as Brian has already mentioned in his presentation, you have remote workers which are not VPN to your company network to your company's network, they of course need to be manually provisioned. So you can have automatic provisioning and manual provisioning side by side. It depends on the case you are needing. So what I'm now going to do is that I'm assigning a user to a specific extension. So I'm going here to the extensions tab and I can see I will take the extension 30. I just do a double click on it and I'm going here at username. I'm going to select a user and I'm going to select Sue Jones. Um, that's basically all I need to do. Interesting at that point is that the carrier operator automatically creates a password word, a zip password for you. Um, which can be revealed if you click here on the uh, keys um, you see in this dialog. But I will show you this later on because I'm going to add another registration for this user because I would like to configure a soft phone later on. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to map a specific phone number to this extension. So I'm just moving over here to the call routing and as you can see we have here uh, several phone numbers which are uh, at the moment are assigned to the extension 10. What I would like to have is that the extension 09 will be assigned to Sue. So I'm just double clicking on it. I'm looking here for the 
I click on here, I do a double click, and I choose Sue Jones from the list. That's all I need to do. I can additionally create here some fallback, so in case um, the extension is offline or there is no voicemail um, configured, um, a phone call will then automatically fall back to extension 10 or whatever extension you would like to have here. So I just say OK. And now when somebody is calling the at the end 309, automatically the extension 30 will ring, which is the extension of Sue. On the right hand side for the routing of the outgoing calls, and I'm doing just double click here on it, I do not want that when Sue is doing an outbound call that her direct uh, number is seen by the person she is calling. I would like um, to have the zero at the end. So this is the main office number where normally a receptionist is handling the phone calls. So when Sue is now doing a phone call, I'm overriding her normal external number with a default number for all extensions. And this is in our case, the 310. Um, and this 310 is the, let's say, official company number. Now I'm going to do to add another registration to an extension. So I'm going here and now I would like to have a second registration for the extension 30. What I'm going to do is doing a right click on the 30 and going to the point of add and say add another registration. And Carrier Operator is now creating automatically a second registration to this extension. The value in the brackets behind the extension are, is the user ID you have to use if you would like to register at the Carrier Operator box. So in case you would like to have um, the this, for example, as a soft phone she is using on her um, laptop, then she would use the zip username or user ID 30P1. And of course, a zip pass password is again automatically created. What I'm now going to do is to reveal this because I need it later on. I will copy it to my clipboard and say, cancel at that point. What is um, interesting here when you create uh, an additional registration for remote users, so normally remote users um, have their own local network, they have a router, um, so they are behind net. So I'm going back again here to the extension and I'm looking at the advanced tab and in 99.9% .9 of the cases when a remote user has, for example, only one-way audio, uh, which will uh, also again mentioned by in the troubleshooting section, uh, Brian is showing you later on, it's a NAT issue, so you have to tick the box extension is behind NAT. Otherwise, you will have such uh, phenomena like uh, you can hear the um, person you call, but the person can't hear you, or vice versa. So I will say OK at that point. What I also would like uh, to have is that the that Sue's um, desktop phone in the company, which is will be used with the user ID 30, should is a grand stream uh, video phone. So what I also would like uh, to do is to assign video codecs. So I'm going to the codec section here, and please forgive me, uh, it's one of the rest from our from my first webinar. You see in the left column in the left um, part of the um, of this window you see the different codecs and normally with the H264 and the MPEG4 you are on the safe side. Any new um, newer phones and also soft phones should be able to use those video codecs. There is um, 
One thing, for example, when you use the X Lite, which is the free version of the Bria soft phone, this is only capable of the 263 video codec. So um, if you are considering to use the X Lite um, among all your um, all your employees for as a video calling client, then you should think about definitely activating the 263 video codec. This is what I told you uh, before I started the demonstration. You should see what are the um, video capabilities of the soft phone or of the hardware video phone you're going to use and you should definitely make sure that everybody is using the same brand or the same version of software. Otherwise, you will maybe have issues when it comes to video calls. So I'm saying OK. Additionally, on the provisioned phones section, we have a separate tab which is called soft phones. Soft phones is exclusively um, for auto provisioning the Cario soft phone, which is available for iOS and Android. Um, it's an a soft phone application and you can also if you would like to have for example Sue here um, as an extension which should be used now you can choose which of those extensions should be used exclusively for the carrier soft phone I'm skipping this point um, at this moment because we don't show you the carrier soft phone application in our demonstration. But what I'm now going to do is that I'm going to configure a soft phone on my, um, on my computer here. I'm using for this purpose the x Lite, which is free of charge. I'm going to add an account and I will call this account Sue on Bind Brewing. This is the um, operator box. I mean, now it comes to the user ID and I exclusively added an, another registration just for her soft phone, which is a 30p1. This is the user ID she, she needs to use. The domain is the name, um, the DNS name of the operator box. And I'm typing in the name. And now you know why I have copied the password into the clipboard because here you put the password in the display name will be the, um, a good readable name from uh, the people, the person uh, Sue is calling sees on his display. And in this x -Lite, um version there is another um, field which is named authorization name. You maybe face such a field in other applications too. Here you should also enter the used user ID or the zip username and I'm saying OK and within seconds you see that the status here has turned from gray into uh, green. So this is now registered to our PBX. Just to prove that I'm saying the correct thing here, you can see that at extension 30, the registration 30p1 is registered. And what I'm now going to do is doing a phone call to this registration. So I'm going to call Sue, which is on available on the 30. One second. I just need to hang up because I had mine on DND. &D. One second again. I'm just typing 30. And now, as you can see, the X light icon is jumping in the lower right corner, and you can see that Carsten Maas is calling Sue. Additionally, Brian has showed you that you can check whether your extension is correctly working and your registration is correctly working when you call a speci special 
PBX service, which is provided by carrier operator. So if you look again at the administration interface under PBX services, there is an option which is called ECHO. It's the extension 81. You just tick the box. And now when you are calling the 81, you are about to enter an ECHO will, test. In this mode, everything you say will be repeated will back to you just as soon as it is received. Talking to you and you the can purpose check of this test is to give um, the voice you can you can hear the voice on and when you're talking if you can hear your own voice then you can see and uh, easily figure out that you have probably registered with the PBX. That's it so far from the demonstration part so I will stop the screen sharing and I will hand over back to Brian. Thanks, Karsten. Right, so that uh, last bit that Karsten was showing there was uh, somewhat of a troubleshooting step. Um, but yeah, just to sort of uh, point out in case you do have some challenges uh, when you are uh, provisioning phones, um, uh, some of the things you, you might run into uh, in case it doesn't provision or some of the things you might want to check just to help troubleshoot the issue. Uh, checking the security log, so it's possible the password might not be uh, correct. You know, for example, Karsten copied and pasted. Maybe somehow the clipboard just didn't convert over properly. It could be something simple like that. Um, so the security log will tell us whether or not the issue is related to authentication. <clears throat> Maybe we uh, you know, mistyped the uh, extension number, so it could be one of those items there. Um, you can also check the error or the warning logs. Uh, those might give some indication uh, as, as, you know, as to what might be causing the provisioning uh, issue. You can also turn on phone provisioning in the debug log. So th this is more uh, if you're trying to set up automatic provisioning and something just isn't working within the automatic part. You see in the debug there, uh, when you right click inside the window, uh, you can choose messages and then from there you can turn on phone provisioning. And uh, as well, you can look at the uh, packet captures. So this is a pretty uh, techie and advanced option. Um, but if you do have the means of, of actually looking at the conversation and maybe just from the standpoint of learning, maybe it's, uh, it's successfully provisioning, uh, but you just want to, uh, to learn more about how the conversation works, uh, Carry Operator does have an option to enable packet captures. You can use uh, you know, Cloud Shark or if you have some other uh, type of analysis tool, you can use that to, to look at the actual uh, SIP conversation. Um, so you can turn that on uh, again from the uh, the networking section of Carrier Operator. There's uh, an option to enable packet captures. Uh, so as Karsten pointed out in the demonstration, uh, the tick box there to enable uh, or specify that your extension is behind that. It's uh, uh, for the most part something you probably want to have enabled. Um, it's only in rare circumstances that you actually would have this disabled. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're getting an issue of one-way audio, I'd say first place to look is here in the uh, properties of the extension in the advanced tab and make sure that uh, you do have that box ticked. Uh, so as Karsten showed uh, during the demonstration, you can also dial extension 81 and that'll at least help to confirm if the uh, audio is working in both directions. So that echo test allows you to, uh, to talk into the phone and then to hear back the response. So it makes sure that uh, uh, audio is working in both directions. You can also review the uh, call history so you can check. So for example, if there's a call quality issue, uh, maybe there's um, the, the sound is choppy or it sounds like you're underwater or garbled or something. Uh, like that. Usually that would indicate some type of a codec or perhaps even uh, an issue with the, uh, uh, the network transport that it might not be uh, terribly reliable or maybe is missing uh, some packets so it might not be a, a reliable network connection. But you can validate that using the call history. Uh, you'll see there there's some um, uh, within each call uh, entry uh, it will show you the codecs that were used 
uh, and as well the QoS value if there was any latency during the call. Um, and then you also want to make sure to verify the port settings on the firewall. Um, so when you're using SIP, uh, most firewalls will try to intelligently uh, figure out what ports need to be open for the RTP stream. Uh, by default, operator uses ports uh, UDP ports 10,000 through 20,000. Uh, but in some cases, depending on the firewall, you might want to just open those ports uh, regardless, uh, just because some firewalls may not properly handle the, uh, the SIP when it's routing through. Um, and then also, you know, I have noticed that you know, the default for the virtual appliance of Karyo Operator is, uh, is quite low, um, so I, I usually recommend making sure that the system where Operator is installed has at least 2 gigs of RAM. And For the virtual appliance, it's very easy to uh, increase that, uh, that memory. Um, the hardware appliance uh, uses 4 gigs, so that generally should not be an issue. So here's just a list of some of the resources uh, that might uh, uh, get you started and kind of summarizes uh, uh, some of the things we've, we've talked about here. <clears throat> so on the Karyo website, uh, you'll see if you just go to the support section then Karyo operator, there's a tech specs tab and that'll list all of the phones that we auto provision for. As well, within the knowledge base, uh, there is a special category for phone provisioning. So if you navigate to Karyo operator, You'll see there's a, a section there for phone provisioning uh, with a number of articles uh, related to what we've talked about here today. Uh, and then the uh, previous few slides for troubleshooting call quality issues, uh, that's KB article 1387. So if you want to get more info on specifically how to do packet captures or just sort of uh, uh, re recapping you know, what I talked about in that slide, you can refer to KB 1387.